The Battle of Punchung was fought in Punchung in 205 BC between the kingdoms of Western Chu and Han, led by Siang Yu and Lu Bang respectively. The Han forces were unprepared and suffered heavy losses. Several of Lu Bang's family members were captured and some of his allies defected to Chu as a result of his defeat. Chapter 1 Background In the spring of 205 BC, Siang Yu was putting down rebellions in the Qi Kingdom, following all the way to the northern coast of the Shandong Peninsula Campaign of Terror, burning homes, burying alive prisoners of war, capturing women, the weak, and the elderly. Tian Heng, brother of Tian Rong, the slain former ruler of Qi, gathered tens of thousands of soldiers and rebelled in Chengyang. At the beginning of summer, Tian Heng installed Tian Rong's son Tian Guang as king of Qi. Siang Yu was unable to dislodge him, but planned on dealing with Qi first before returning his military attention to Han. With Siang Yu thus occupied, Lu Bang collected a force of 560,000 troops from his subordinate lands, and marched east to attack Chu. En route, he encountered Peng Yue, who joined his cause upon promise of a fiefdom in Wei. As opposed to combining forces, Lu Bang sent Peng Yue's 30,000 troops to pacify the surrounding area. Lu Bang's army entered Siang Yu's capital of Pengchung apparently unopposed, looting its valuables and taking its women, but discipline was lax and each day found the Han troops deeper in their cups. Chapter 2 The Battle Hearing of the fall of Pengchung, Siang Yu ordered the bulk of his forces to maintain the attack on Qi, while he personally led 30,000 crack troops to retake the capital. He encamped about 10 miles from the city, in present-day Xiao County, Anhui. At dawn, Siang Yu launched an attack on Pengchung, and by noon had broken the unprepared Han army. Routed, the Han infantry fled into the nearby Gu and Si rivers, where over 100,000 of them were killed by Chu soldiers. The remaining troops fled south to high ground, but were cornered by Chu forces by the Sui River, where another 100,000 Han troops drowned, their corpses damming up the river. Lu Bang escaped the city with a handful of mounted bodyguards, heading to nearby Pei to collect his family. Siang Yu also dispatched troops to Pei in an attempt to capture Lu Bang's family. His family had all fled, but Lu Bang encountered on the road his eldest daughter and second eldest son Lu Ying. The Chu army coerced a local into leading them to two of Lu Bang's family, his father Lu Taigong and wife Lu Ji. These two Siang Yu captured and placed in his army as hostages. One account states Lu Bang's mother was also captured. A famous and possibly fictional account of Lu Bang's flight portrays him as so fearful that he thrice dumps his children out of his chariot in order to move faster, and it is only the repeated intervention of Xia Ho Ying that secures the children's escape. Chapter 3 Aftermath Although he had won a stunning reversal, Siang Yu returned to a capital that had been plundered by the occupying Han armies. Faced with a starving civilian population, Siang Yu decided against pursuing Lu and instead shared his military provisions with the populace. Although his decisive victory had turned general opinion against Lu, the failure to exploit this strategic advantage meant that Siang Yu ultimately missed his opportunity to end this mortal threat. Lu Bang gradually collected his lost forces, but did not retain his gains in Chu lands. Most of his family remained hostages of Siang Yu. His allies lost faith in him, Sima Xin and Dong Yi abandoned him for Chu. Siang Yu gained in reputation and power, but continued to deal with problems in Qi.